Okay, class, in this video, we're going to cover the chapter one section, algebraic expressions. Now, unlike the last section, this section, you cannot type everything in the calculator. You will be able to type some stuff in the calculator, but some of it you won't. So here they're just giving us an algebraic expression. It's called algebraic when you have variables in there. Variables are letters that represent unknown quantities. So here you have an expression, and if I knew the value for x, I could evaluate this expression. And lo and behold, they do give me an x value for x. So what I did was I plugged in that negative 4 everywhere I saw an x. And very importantly, I placed in parentheses around my negative four every time I plugged in that negative four. It is very important that you do that because if you don't, remember the question in the last section where it had um, negative one in parentheses squared versus negative one squared, and they both ended up with very different answers, not super different, just one with a positive and one with a negative. So whether those parentheses are there or not, matters, okay? And when you plug in a number, regardless if that number you're plugging in is positive or negative, you must put it in parentheses, okay? So essentially what happens is that this expression becomes three. This is represents the X, then the square, then minus four, and this represents the X value again, plus four. And once you know what that x value is, that's the value that goes into those parentheses, okay? So it's super important that you do use these parentheses. So to evaluate it, you can do it by hand or you can use a calculator because this is all numbers, which means it can be typed in my calculator. So I'm gonna type three parentheses, negative four, close, square, minus four parentheses, negative four, close parentheses, plus four. And it gives me the value 68. <clears throat> For the next problem, I'm doing the same thing, but notice that this time I'm plugging the parentheses, I'm plugging one into those parentheses for X. So two parentheses, um, one squared, minus three parentheses one plus four and i get the value three now here same thing they gave me a value for x and a value for y so essentially you're using like two sets of parentheses so one set of parentheses for x right and then another set of parentheses for y so notice that around here is a different color because that is going to be a different value, okay? And then I can type this whole expression in my calculator. So I'm going to hit the fraction key. I'm gonna type four parentheses, negative five, close, plus three parentheses, one. And at the bottom, parentheses, negative five, close it, um, plus four. And so I end up with 17. Similarly here, now here I didn't put parentheses because it's the only thing downstairs. But if there was other stuff around this X, I would have definitely put it in parentheses. And if you do choose to put it in parentheses or not, you still will get the same answer, only because these variables were all by themselves, okay? If you'll notice over here, I didn't put parentheses because it was just the X all by itself plus four. So whatever that number was plus four. But you could always play it safe. And instead of never guessing when you need the parentheses and when you don't, just always use them, okay? So fraction six over parentheses three over plus fraction 18 over parentheses six and we end up with the value of five, okay? Moving on, I believe there were about 24 or 26 in this particular section. So let's see. I think it was 24. 
Uh, yeah, it's 24 problems again. So we'll get through them. Right now we're on number five. So again, here I'm gonna plug in four for six. I'm gonna plug in six for y, uh, six again for y and four for x. And then we'll plug all of that in the calculator. So fraction two parentheses four minus parentheses six plus six over, over two parentheses six minus parentheses four. And I do get the same value one. Okay, um, and then now for this one, again, there's a negative here, but the X is gonna be replaced with parentheses and negative three inside. This X is gonna be replaced with parentheses with a negative three inside. So I have negative parentheses, negative three parentheses squared, minus six parentheses, negative three, close. And I do get the same positive nine. Same thing here, fraction, you just need to plug in the y value everywhere. So five parentheses two minus five parentheses two squared over parentheses two squared minus six. And we end up with the value five. Okay, now for the next problems, you cannot type these all in the calculator because they didn't give you a value for x. You can't plug in a number and then therefore be able to put it in your calculator. So this expression is not all numbers. When you have numbers, just regular numbers, these are called constants, okay? So this is one giant expression with all constants. This expression, however, has some constants in it, but it also has a variable term. So that's a term that has a letter in it, okay? And because it has a variable term, I will not be able to just compute everything in my calculator, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply what's called the distributive, distributive property, where we can take this four and we can actually multiply it to both of these terms, eliminating the reason or purpose for those parentheses. So these parentheses are here to tell the reader that four needs to be multiplied by this expression. Or in other words, four needs to be multiplied by both of these terms inside the parentheses. So once you actually do that multiplication, there's no need for the parentheses any longer. So four times five X. So if I am going to multiply the number of X's that I have by four. So if I have five apples and I quadruple that, I now have 20 apples. And then four times four we know is 16. Now you can combine your constants together. You just cannot combine your variable terms with the constants. So I can combine these two together. So positive 16 minus nine is actually a positive two. Now notice that there was plus and minus symbols here. So when you combine these, you do have to have a plus or minus symbol in the middle. Now, depending on what the sign is of that result, that will tell you whether this should be a plus sign or a minus sign. Since my result was a positive seven, I have plus seven. If you have a plus or a minus symbol, when you combine those, you still need to have a plus or minus symbol. The what, Which one it will be depends on the sign that you get when you combine those values together, okay? So my final answer here is 20X plus seven. And if I knew what X was, I would be able to do this multiplication first and then add the seven, giving me the actual numerical value. But right now, while I don't know what X is, this is the simplest way to write this expression is like this, okay? So all I've done is simplified the expression. <clears throat> now they give us a more complicated one. I really don't know why this problem is here at number nine when they go back to some of the easier problems and they don't get to this way more, this is like the most complicated one there is. Um, but it's here in number nine, so I'm gonna do it. Um, I just don't understand. I didn't create this homework, the department did. There's a whole committee of teachers that creates it. Um, I don't know if somebody just forgot to drag this one down to the bottom because it is one of the more complicated problems. But we're gonna follow our order of operations. When we're doing our order of operations, we must start with the innermost parentheses. So the idea would be to combine these two things together. 
but we can't subtract these because this is a variable term and this is a constant term. So if you can't combine them, then move on to what's outside. Now notice that you have minus these two expressions. What you need to visualize as if there's an imaginary one there, and I wrote like little dots to make it look visible, <laughs> like a little ghost one. So you have this little ghost one here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that one, that negative one, and you're going to distribute it to these two terms. So negative one times a positive two y is negative two y. And remember, you had a minus sign there. It was looked at as a minus. It was four minus all this. So after I multiply, I have to have a minus or a plus. And since I have a negative times a positive is a negative, it's gonna be a minus sign in between. Then the negative times a negative is a positive. So then I will have a plus sign there. Now in here, these two constants can be combined, just not the variable term. So the variable term comes down and four plus two is six. Then we know we can't combine on the inside. So we move to the outside. Now it looks like a negative three that's get distributed. So negative three times negative two is positive six y. Negative three times positive six is negative 18. Now these two constants I can combine. So you end up with this positive six y term. And then these two combined three minus 18 is that negative 15. Okay, and you did have a minus sign and a plus sign. So when you combine those, you do have to have a plus sign or a minus sign because it's negative, that's why it's minus. That was way complicated. I don't think you'll ever see an expression like this other than that problem in the homework, okay? Normally they're like this, okay? So same thing as number eight, we're gonna distribute this five. So when I multiply that, I get 20X, 15, bring down my minus 14, combine my constants, a positive 15 minus 14 is a positive one, so I have to put plus one. Same thing here, I'm gonna distribute the seven, distribute the seven, distribute this positive three, I get this. Then I'm gonna combine these two together, so 21 plus nine, 21 plus nine is where I have 30, so I have 30 apples here total. And then for my constants, I have negative 28 plus six. And together that makes negative 22, so it looks like minus 22. So when you're adding and subtracting, so negatives are the same as minus and positives are the same as adding plus, okay? Only when you're adding or subtracting. When you're multiplying, it's like a negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a positive is negative, okay? So it's a little bit different signs. That's the real tricky part when it comes to positives and negatives, is that um, negatives act like minus signs and vice versa when you're adding and subtracting. But when you're multiplying, dividing, it's a whole different set of rules. So there's two sets of rules for signs, one for multiplying and dividing, and one for adding and subtracting. And that's the biggest, biggest hangover when it comes up, when it comes to signs. So here I'm gonna multiply these. So a negative times a positive is a negative 10X. A negative times a negative is a positive eight, okay? But since this was a minus sign, you do have to put a plus or a minus. And so since that came out to be positive, that is why it's a plus. Here, a negative times a negative is a positive 6x, negative times a positive is a negative 12, which turns it into minus 12. Now, number 14. So here we are, we're going to distribute this four. So four times two y is eight y, four times negative five is negative 20. Here's that little ghost one again. So negative one times seven y is negative seven y. Negative one times positive four is going to be a negative four. Eight minus seven is just one, positive one. But we don't ever write the one. We don't ever write one apple. We just write the apple, okay? You don't have to write the one in front. And then negative 20 minus four is negative 24. For number 15, it asks you to simplify it, but this problem cannot be simplified 
because in order for it to combine, you would have to have what are called like terms. And in order for you to be a like term, you have to have the same letter and that letter has to have the same exponent. And since these exponents are different from one another, we cannot combine them. If they were both x squared, or if they were both x to the fourth, then I would be able to say there's four x squared or there's four x to the fourth, because two and two would make four, right? But here, those, very, those uh, exponents on the variables are not the same. And so you cannot simplify this one. Notice on number 16, they are same letter, same exponents. So what is 18 minus 18? Zero, means I have no x squared anymore, I have nothing. So it's just zero all by itself. You don't ever write this. That just is zero, that's nothing. If you have no apples, then you have nothing, right? So number 17 is this expression here. So we're gonna go with the innermost parentheses. So we have to take care of this negative one. So that becomes six minus y minus three. You can combine the six minus three to get a positive three. And then you can distribute this two to get negative two y and positive six. Here's a little bit more complicated one again. So we're gonna work with this one first. So there's nothing to do on the inside because this is a constant and this is a variable. You can't combine those, but you can distribute the seven. So you get 63 x squared minus seven. You can combine these numbers to get you a plus two. So then finally, I'm going to multiply. And this is an invisible one again. So it's five times these two terms, which gives me these two terms. And then negative one times those two terms, which gives me these two terms. Then I can combine my variables. So 45 minus 63 is negative 18. And that's how many x squareds I have. Negative 35 minus 2 is a negative 37. So it's negative 18x squared minus 37. And I know I'm running into my cap. I usually like to stop the videos at 15 minutes. Um, and I might need to do that. Actually, no, I don't need to do that. There were only 19 problems on this particular section. So I'm just gonna cover this 19th problem and then this uh, video will be finished. So for number 19, it says that the graph shows the median or middlemost weekly earnings of male and female college graduates for six selected years from 2000 to 2011. The data can be described by the mathematical models shown where M is the median weekly earnings of male college graduates and F is the median weekly earnings of female college graduates. And N represents the number of years after 2000. So they give you a formula there and then they give you this chart, this graph um, bar graph. And the question that it asks is, Use the appropriate formula to find the median weekly earnings of male college graduates in 2010. So if we're talking about 2010, N represents the number of years after 2000. Well, 2010 is 10 years after 2000, so it would mean that N equals 10. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the formula for the males and I'm plugging in 10 for N, kind of like what we did before. And so you can type this whole thing in the calculator. You don't need to do it by hand. I'm doing it by hand for reference, but you don't need to do it by hand. You could type this whole thing in the calculator and just end up with that. So here's my calculator. I'm gonna do clear fraction, negative two parentheses 10 squared plus 180 parentheses 10 plus 5125 over five and it gives me that same 1345. Then the second part of this problem says, does the formula overestimate the earnings shown in the graph and by how much? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the value that we just found by the value that's in the chart, okay? Um, and so, and it has to be in that order. So what you found minus the value in the chart. So if you look at the chart, let me go back real quick. For 2010, the males, so here's 2010, the males are the white bars and then the females are the gray bars. 
So the white bar says uh, 1349 for 2010. So what I did was uh, the number that I found, 1345 minus the number in the bar graph, which was 1349. When I type those in my calculator, just like that, 1345 minus 1349, I ended up with a negative four. So if you have a negative, then it's an underestimate. If it were a positive, then I would select overestimate. But since this is negative, I did select underestimate in the computer. And then by how much? By four. So you don't put a negative four in here. The negative represents that it's an underestimate. And then the value four goes in the box all by itself, okay? So for part B, it says use the appropriate formula to find the median weekly earnings of female college graduates in 2010. So just like before, that means that N would be 10. And I plugged in the 10 into the female um, formula. So over here, I typed in fraction, negative three parentheses, 10 squared plus 155 times 10 um plus three seven eight five over five and i get the value one zero zero seven so then again remember you're going to do the formula minus what you get from the graph so my one zero zero seven minus and for 2010 the female earnings was 10 12. so i'm doing my 1007 minus the 10 12. i got another negative which means it's an underestimate by five units and that is the end of um, this particular section. And this was a review for another course. And I will continue in the next video with um, the 2.1 lesson. So it should be, yes, 2.1 is next, okay? So I will see you guys in the next video.